Good morning and welcome to Net Church online service. Our doors might be shut and locked, but together right across the southeast of England, church is open. And we are gathering together to acknowledge that God is great, that He has got a plan for our lives. Let me encourage you this morning where you are, in your living room, if you're watching upstairs or downstairs, why don't you stand with me as we gather together as God's church to give Him thanks for what He's doing. Sun and stars declare your ways All creation sings your praise you're the name above all names. Spoke the stars into the night. With the breath created life. You're the name above all names. You're the God of the universe. Yet you know me by name. If my heart's still beating, I don't need a reason. I will lift my hands up high. For there's no one like you, there is none beside you. You are God and you are most high. Oh. Within your hand, every wave by your command, you are worthy of all praise. You're the God of the universe, and you know me by name. If my heart's still beating, I don't need. For there's no one like you, there is none beside you, you are God and you are most high. Just one breath created light. You spoke the darkness into light. We're just one breath created light. If my heart's still beating, I don't need a reason. I will lift my hands up high. For there's no one like you, there is none beside you, you are God and you are most high.
You know, right now, church, God has given us the victory. Why don't you join us in singing this song and declaring this over your situations? The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. Because when the darkness falls, you won't breathe it. Because the God I serve knows only how to triumph. No, oh my God, we never fail. No, oh my God, we never fail. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Yes, I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Cause there's power in the mighty name of Jesus. And every war he wages, he wins. I'm not backing down from any giant I know how this story ends yes, I know how this story ends so I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see a victory, I'm gonna see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. Cause I'm gonna see a victory, I'm gonna see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord Oh, it belongs to you, Jesus Cause you take the enemy meant for evil But you turned it for good you turned it for good You take the enemy meant for evil But you turned it for good You turned it for good Come on, church, let's sing together Cause you take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Cause you take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Cause I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Cause I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. So you take, you take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it 
turn you for good. You can turn you for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn you for good. You turn you for good. You turn it for favor be upon you in a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you in a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor 
be upon you in a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you in a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going and your weeping and rejoicing he is for you 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 he is for you, he is for you, he is for you.
Hey, wasn't that absolutely incredible? We have an amazing worship team. Thank you for Jess and for Ellis for leading us there. I don't know about you, but I love worship. Wherever you are, whether you're upstairs, downstairs, inside or outside, whether you're in the church building, we can actually worship God. And worship comes from a heart of thanks for everything that God has done for us, for everything that God is. And you know, church, when we worship, something significant happens. It's not just us that are involved. As we begin to sing our thanks and our praises and declare how great God is, He actually joins in by the power of His Holy Spirit, His presence. He fills us with His peace and His calm and with faith and with excitement for the future. We've been meeting as a team regularly, obviously by Zoom on the computer. We're not able to meet in person, but we've been meeting regularly with our team and we've been praying over the last few weeks about what can we bring? What can we teach the church in this current season? We've all been under lockdown now for a number of weeks and we're getting into a rhythm, but we're facing new challenges. And so we wanted to empower you and teach you about what the Bible says to make you fighting fit in facing those challenges. So our new title for our new series today is called Fight or Flight. What do you do when those new challenges come? And there's that old reaction that comes up inside. You You either want to run away or you want to run into the battle. So we've got some various stories from people in the church of faith and how that's really helped them. They're going to be, uh, we're going to show those to you later. And we'd love you for you to send some of your stories to us. So maybe we can mention those in the next few weeks. But before we start today, why don't you just watch the screens?
That is so good. I am inspired by stories of the past, but I know this, that God is still moving today. Recently, I was speaking to some connect group leaders and one of them explained there was somebody in their connect group whose, uh, whose sister was seriously ill. She had a tumor and it did not look good. The doctor said she had eight months to live. She spoke to her connect group leader and they prayed together, believing that God would bring healing. This connect group leader called back this person and said, why don't we stand and pray and believe that, that your, your, your sister will receive Jesus, will accept Jesus. And so she was really afraid. She was really fearful. She, 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 she called up a couple of times and she explained the fact that there is a God who loved you, a God who is interested not just in your physical hearing, healing, but in so much more. And it is amazing today to know that, that this person in our church was able to lead their sister to Jesus. So he was able to point her to Jesus and say, I know a God who heals, but I also know a God who rescues and a God who saves. So great, isn't it, that there is a stirring in God's people, that there is a lifting of our faith, there is a boldness. And I just want to share a story from a sitting board. So a few weeks ago, there was a terrible accident where a young 17-year-old lad um, got hit by a motorbike. And before the ambulances got there, before the police even got there, that a member of Net Church, she shot out of her house and she was able just to comfort him she was able just to be there with him she was able to to pray over him and what I love about that was that there wasn't any hesitancy there wasn't any you know in all of this worry about um coronavirus that she saw a man in need and she was straight out of the house and she was straight there being Jesus's hands being Jesus's feet just like the the good Samaritan story that she brought the presence of Jesus into that situation so powerful and, and these services are obviously online on different social media platforms. And because of that, people are hearing that there is a church that believes in the power yeah. of prayer, believes in a God who heals today. A Hindu family locally contacted one of our family and said, hey, my family are all suffering right now really badly from COVID-19. Would you pray? Would you, would you stand with us? Would you believe that God could do something? And it was amazing to hear only a few weeks later that they'd been discharged from hospital. Yeah. This, this member of our church was so excited to know and to, to report to us that God is still in the business of healing people, of loving people, and ultimately of pointing them back to him. So powerful. I want to tell you another story of God healing coronavirus. So in a little village, in a little care home, in a little village just outside of Sittingbourne, and one of the members of our church and she felt really strongly that morning when she turned up for a shift and she felt really strongly and she felt a real boldness in her, in her heart that, you know what, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray for the staff. I'm going to pray for the residents before we even start our shift. And then she goes about her shift and going and taking care of the patients. And one of the patients that they go in to see, he has been unresponsive for days. The family have been called in and been told, you know, that they need to prepare for the worst, that he has this virus and he's not going to get any better and so they go in to the room this woman from net church and her work colleague and they go into the room and she just feels a real strength a real sense just to pray for him you know so she's praying inside and then suddenly this guy turns and he moves his head towards her that there is a movement in his body and an acknowledgement in his eyes and she speaks to him and she says can I pray for you and he nods his head and he says yes you can pray for me and within days that man is healed that not only did she have the faith to believe that God could heal and defeat this virus but she had the faith to stand and be bold before she even saw God do anything. You know, Andrew Church, God is stirring up faith within us. Let's not dampen it down. You know, we're looking at fight or flight. Let's fight. Let's have the faith to stand and fight for those around us. So good. We're going to come to a time together where we remember what Jesus did, the ultimate victory that Jesus won on the cross. It's so good together across the south of England to be able to stand and to say, Jesus, we remember what you've done and we look forward to all that you are going to do. Jay, why don't you pray for us as we grab a, some bread or a wafer or a cracker, whatever you've got, got near you and some, some juice. We are going to take communion together yeah. and we are going to remember Jesus. 
Jesus, I thank you that you died upon that cross for us. Jesus, I thank you that all of our mistakes, all of our shame, all of the burden and the heaviness of everything that we've ever done wrong, everything that ever separated us from God, God, Jesus, that you took it upon that cross. And we just want to thank you again. We just want to tell you that we love you again. Jesus, we just want to surrender ourselves to you again and just remember you as we take this bread and as we drink this juice. And I pray, Lord, that we will be bold in our faith, we'll be bold in our declaration, we'll be bold in remembering who you are and what you have done and that the same power that raised Christ from the dead is alive and living in us, that we will be a bold people of faith in this season that we face. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's take communion together. Hey, we've come to that part in the service again where right across the church, we're going to be giving. Proverbs 11 says this, that a generous person will flourish and those who refresh the needs of others will themselves be refreshed. The Bible is all about generosity. And it actually says that if we are generous and we give to the needs of others, God himself will refresh us and give to our needs. Of course, this is God's heart. John 3, 16, probably the most well-known passage in the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever would believe in him, that's Jesus Christ, they will not perish but have everlasting life. As we give today, we give knowing actually out of a heart of generosity that God himself is going to give to us. So there are many ways that you can give today. You can give by standing order. You can give by Monzo. You can give by direct debit or by bank transfer. So right across the church today, why don't we come together as we give of our tithes and offerings to the Lord today. In the crushing, in the pressing, you are making the wine. In the soil I now surrender, you are breaking new ground. So I yield to you and to your careful hand. When I trust you, I don't need to understand. Make me a vessel. Make me an offering. Make me whatever you want me to be. I came here with nothing, but all you have given me, Jesus, bring no wine out of me. In the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new wine. In the soil I now surrender, you are breaking new ground. And so I yield to you and to your careful hand. When I trust you, I don't need to understand. So make me a vessel. Make me an offering, make me whatever you want me to be. I came here with nothing, but all you have 
given me Jesus bring new wine out of me Cause where there is new wine there is new power there is new freedom the kingdom is here i lay down my old flame to carry a new fire today because mm. where there is new wine there is new power there is new freedom the kingdom is here i lay down my old flame to carry a new fire today Hey, wasn't that great? It's amazing to give. Thank you so much, church, for all you're doing, continuing to give. We, our doors may be shut, but we still have bills to pay, staff to pay. We're still reaching the poor, and we've still got mortgages to pay. And we thank God that as we're generous, the church begins to flourish and has an amazing influence on our community and on our world. I hope you're ready. We're about to start our new challenge, Fight or Flight. And it's a pleasure today to introduce one of the most, um, I want to say, fun-loving, outgoing members of our Net Church leadership team. Why don't you just be ready as Heather Jackson comes to bring the word this morning. Oh, it's such a privilege to share with you this morning. And I'm really believing that God is going to speak to you this morning. And I know that because it was about three weeks ago and I was doing my morning devotions, just spending time with Jesus. And God just gave me this message. And at the time, I didn't know that I was going to be asked to preach. I didn't know that, that I was going to be asked to share today. But God just gave me this message. And so it was amazing because then when I was asked to share, the thing that God has spoken to me about was exactly what I was asked to share on this morning. So I'm believing today that God is going to speak to you powerfully this morning. And I want to start off by asking you a question. Are you putting your faith in the right thing? I was uh, thinking back to the time when Andrew, my husband and I got engaged and he woke me up early one morning. Well, he told me I had to get up early one morning and we were going to go to Cambridge and we were going to watch the sunrise. And I didn't question it at the time. I just thought, sure, he's romantic. Let's go watch the sunrise. And as we got nearer to Cambridge, we went to this field and in the middle of the field was a hot air balloon. And Andrew was taking me on a hot air balloon. Now, what I didn't realise is he was going to propose later in the day. I just thought he was going to do something nice for me. And so we waited and we saw the person flying the hot air balloon. I don't know what they're called, a hot air balloon driver, who knows. But he was making sure that the hot air balloon was all laid out, that there were no creases, that there were no tears in the balloon, checking that the basket was attached. And so we got into the basket all was going well and we started gliding up into the sky and it was stunning and you could look down you could see all the countryside and the little farms and it was just beautiful and we kept going and then it came to the part where we were going to land and so far my faith in this hot air balloon had uh, had proved to be true. The basket had not detached from the balloon. There was enough fuel. There hadn't been like a giant lightning bolt from the sky. Um, but as we landed, it became a 
apparent that my faith in the ability of the person flying this hot air balloon to land us where we were meant to land, where the Land Rover had been following us, ready to pick us up, was a little misplaced. And we ended up landing in the middle of a Ministry of Defence secure unit. It hadn't gone to plan, it hadn't gone well. Uh, no one could get us out at this point. There were urgent phone calls being made to the Ministry of Defence. Um, no one had a key for this. No one could get us out. I thought it was hilarious. Andrew less so, because obviously at that point, I didn't realise that he had a ring in his pocket. And eventually we got out after several hours with a police escort. And my faith in the ability of the uh, guy flying the balloon to land us in the right place, as I said, turned out to have been a little misplaced. What is it this morning? What is it that you are putting your faith in? Are you putting your faith in the right thing? And I want to read to you today from Exodus. I want to read to you about the passage in the Bible where um, God has rescued the Israelites from Egypt. They had been slaves there for hundreds of years and God had performed amazing miracles to get them out of Egypt. He had led them out and they are now at the point of the, the story um, where they're coming towards the Red Sea. So if you've got your Bibles, um, just open them and we're going to read from Exodus 14 verses 10 to 15. So why don't you read along with me? And it says this. As Pharaoh approached, because by this time the Egyptians had realised that they may have made an error in letting the Israelites go, that the Israelites were quite, uh, quite good labour and they changed their mind, decided they wanted them back. So they're running after them right now. It says, as Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up and there were the Egyptians marching after them and they were terrified and they cried out to the Lord. And they said to Moses... Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians? It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. But Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance that the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still. And then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. And I just thought this was an amazing passage about us needing to have faith in the battle. You know, this message we've called Faith for the Fight. And, you know, I just really feel like God is going to speak to you today about making sure your eyes are fixed on him and having faith for that fight. Now, the first thing that strikes me about this passage is the Israelites' response. Um, they were terrified. And in fairness to them, naturally speaking, the situation wasn't looking great. They had the Red Sea in front of them. They had mountains surrounding them. And behind them, the Egyptian army were charging towards them. And the Israelites knew how brutal the Egyptian army were. You know, they they were coming towards them, charging. They've got their chariots. They've got their horses. They've got their swords. They've got their weapons. These are skilled men. And then you've got the Israelites who are, you know, unskilled people. There's women, there's children. They've got no weapons to, that are going to work against the Egyptian army. And like I said, they are trapped. And so they, when they see the Egyptians coming towards them, they are terrified. And I wonder if this is you this morning. I wonder if the situation that you have found yourself in at the moment seems like there's no escape, seems like there's no way out. I wonder if you're sat there this morning and you are feeling like, I do not know how I am going to get myself out of this one. Well, I want to declare to you today that the same God who rescued the Israelites can rescue you today, that we need to make sure that we are putting our faith in the right thing. 
You know, when we are putting our battle in the right, and when we are putting our faith in the right thing, we need to remember, don't we, what God has done before. You see, the Israelites were focusing on the Egyptians and the power of the Egyptians coming towards them. And humanly speaking, the situation was impossible. But they had forgotten all the things that God had done for them before. They'd forgotten the miracles that that God had performed in getting them out of Egypt and even distorted their thinking. You know, they were saying things to Moses like, oh, it was better for us when we were serving the Egyptians. And I wonder if we're guilty of that sometimes. I wonder if we're guilty of looking back at the past, looking at where we came from and thinking, oh, it was so much easier then. Oh, that house that we lived in it was so much better than this one or that job it was so much easier than than the current situation that I'm finding myself in but the Israelites were putting their faith in the wrong thing weren't they they were looking at their situation humanly speaking and forgetting about the God of the impossible And I want to ask you this morning, you know, how big is your God? Because when we when we look at situations and without recognising how big our God is, we act as if everything depends on us. You know, we start thinking, oh, you know, my situation, what am I going to do? You know, I can't possibly be generous. I can't possibly be give because uh, what if? What if I run out of money? What if? What if? Or or I can't possibly have that conversation with this person because what if they laugh at me? What if they slam the phone down on me? What if they make fun of me and ridicule me? What if? You know, when situations seem impossible, we need to remember that that God is a big, big God. We need to make sure we are putting our faith in the right thing. Do you know, there's this brilliant quote. I don't know if any of you have ever um, watched the Chronicles of Narnia. It's an amazing um, series of books actually written by a Christian man called C.S. Lewis. And a lot of the stories are based on stories in the Bible. And there's this one part where Aslan, who is the lion in it, who sort of, you know, that almost represents Jesus in a lot of the books. And, and one of the children says to Aslan, Aslan, you've, you've got bigger And Aslan turns to the child and he says, no, my child, I haven't got bigger. You've just got older. And the child says to Aslan, what, you you haven't grown? And I just struck me that that's how we need to be with God, isn't it? That, that, our, that God doesn't change. God is the same yesterday, today and forever. But as we grow in our understanding of who he is, as we grow in our knowledge of what he's done as we remember the things that he has done before our understanding of how big God is will increase and we will be able to you know uh, trust in him even more we'll be able to increase our faith we know we need to know that we can put our faith in God that he is for us that he will never leave us that he will never forsake us are you putting your faith in the right thing this morning church And I want to encourage us as well that a really, um, something that I found practically for this is actually making a note of things, writing things down. You know, we see back in the story, don't we, that the Israelites forgot everything that God had done for them before. Suddenly, Egypt seemed much better. You know, they were rallying against Moses. They were, they were terrified. They were speaking out of their fear. But maybe if they'd have just taken a moment to remember the miracles that God had done before, maybe their attitude would have shifted. And, you know, just encourage you, write things down. You know, as God answers your prayers, write it down. Keep a prayer journal. And then in times when you are struggling, times when it all feels a bit too much, you can go back and you can remember again how big your God is. You can go back again and remember clearly what God has done for you in the past. I know for, you know, myself personally, there have been times when, you know, we've had car insurance bills and the money's not been in that account. And, you You know, the money has come in and we weren't expecting it. You know, when we've moved from um, town to town, when we had new jobs, you know, God has provided us with houses. God has provided us with jobs. You know, God has never let us down and he is not going to start now. 
In the book of Hebrews, in Hebrews 12, um, encourage us to run with perseverance the race mapped out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus. And I just want to encourage you this morning, church, how big is your God? You need to make sure that you are keeping your eyes fixed on Jesus, that you are putting your faith in the right thing this morning. And as we go into the next part of the story, I am blown away by Moses' response to the Israelites. You know, they have rallied against him. They have, they have made fun of him. You know, they have questioned his leadership. And Moses turns and he says in verse 13, do not be afraid, stand firm and you will see the deliverance that the Lord will bring you today. It says in verse 14, the Lord will fight for you. You only need to stand still. And I am just blown away by Moses' confidence. I am blown away. Moses doesn't say God might help us today. You know, maybe God might come through for us again. Moses speaks without even knowing the plan that God has with complete confidence. He is totally sure that God is going to come through, that God will fight for them, that they will see the deliverance of the Lord today. And I want to tell you this morning that you can have complete confidence in who God is. God will never let you down. God will never leave you. God will never forsake you. He will never, ever let you down. And as I was thinking about this, I was thinking um, about um, a child in the swimming pool. You know, have you ever been on holiday or maybe you've been to your local swimming pool and you have seen a parent or an adult in the water and they are reaching out their hands, they're reaching out their arms and there is a small child, a toddler on the edge and, you know, they are looking down and they are preparing to jump and the water is too deep for them. They cannot stand up in the water on their own but they look down and they see their mum, they see their dad, they see whoever has brought them and and they have complete confidence that when they jump off the side, that that person with outstretched arms is going to catch them. And I want to tell you today that that is your God, that the situation that you find yourself in at the moment, you can have complete confidence that God has got you. You know, Jaya spoke a few weeks ago, didn't she, about how God has always got our back. And you can have complete confidence in the God who's got your back. Like that child who has complete faith that their parent will catch them. We can have complete faith that God will catch us too. You know, we can have confidence going into every situation because of who God is. You know, Moses knew this, didn't he? Moses had such an intimate relationship with God. Moses had seen God work before. Moses had had conversations with God when he appeared to him in the burning, in the burning bush. And he know, knew that when God showed up, everything changed. You know, going back to Narnia, I wonder if you've seen the, um, the Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. It's one of my favourite Narnia um, DVDs. If you haven't seen the Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, go out and get it. It is such a great film. And it, again, they're at the final, it's like the final battle. And you've got the white witch in her army on one side. The white witch is the enemy causing pain and suffering to the people. And then you've got the army over here. This is the army at the moment being led by Peter. The white witch um, has killed Aslan, or so she thinks, um, three days earlier. But they're still getting ready to go into battle. And the armies charge towards each other. The white witch mobilises her army. And all these beasts come charging forward with their clubs and their swords. And Peter, who is leading the other army, puts up a valiant fight. But it becomes apparent that the white witch and her her army that they are winning and that they are that Peter and his army are losing and Peter shouts out get back get back retreat go back and his army start retreating but little do they know that the white witch hasn't killed Aslan well she did but that he has come back to life again he has risen again and Aslan is charging towards the battle and Aslan appears and suddenly everything changes. The whole tone of the battle changes because Aslan is there. 
Suddenly, Peter's army are filled with confidence again and they charge and they go forward and they start winning the battle. And Aslan comes and he takes out the white witch and the battle is won. And that is just like our God. You know, when our God shows up in any situation that we're going for, through, sorry, everything changes. You can have complete confidence in the God who loves you. And the Bible tells us so much about who God is. You know, there's many names given for God in the Bible. You know, we, we know that God is our protector, that God is our provider, that God is our healer, that God is our ever-present help in times of trouble, that God is our refuge and our strength, that God is our rock. We know that nothing is impossible for God. We know as well, don't we, that, that God loves us so much that he sent his son to die for us. You know, he sent Jesus so that all he could, Jesus could take the punishment for all the things that we've done wrong and that we could be forgiven. And if God will send his only son to die for us, how much more do we, how much more confidence can we have? What will God withhold for us? God loves you so passionately. And we know that Jesus rose from the dead three days later, showing that he has all victory, that all power on heaven and earth belongs to him, that not even death can be not even death and um, it can be conquered that that God has power and authority even after death in Isaiah 41 it says fear not for I am with you do not be dismayed for I am your God I will strengthen you I will help you and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand and I just want to ask you today do you believe him do you believe that your God is big enough? You know, maybe you're sat at home and you've walked away from God or you've, um, you know, you've never even known God. But I want to tell you today that God is big enough that whatever situation you are in at the moment, he will fight for you. He has got your back. You are not too far away from him. He loves you. And the final thing that I notice about this passage is when God says to Moses in verse 15, he says, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to get moving. You know, sometimes we need to put our faith into action. The time has come to stop praying and to move forward, to step out into what God has said and to trust him. You know, Moses has done all the right things. He has prayed. He has sought God. He has put his confidence in God. He has stood firm against opposition. And now the time has come to move. No excuses. And I want to challenge you today not to make excuses, but to step out into all that God has for you. You know, there's another story of Indiana Jones where, you know, it's the last crusade and the Holy Grail is over there. And Indiana Jones needs to get to the Holy Grail in order to um, save his dying father. And he looks in front of them and there's this giant ravine and he cannot cross it. It is impossible. There is no way. But as he makes the decision that he is going to go for it, that he is going to leap, an invisible force upholds him and he gets it and he makes it. But it was as he made the decision to step out and to get moving that he found that actually he could do it. Maybe you know what the right thing is to do, um, but actually you're scared or it's inconvenient. Let me encourage you today to do it. Let me encourage you today to get moving. And maybe this is you at home and, and I don't know what it is personally for you that you need to do to get moving, to put your faith into action. But maybe it's a phone call that you need to make. Maybe that you have had a huge family argument. Maybe there's a rift in your family and you need to be the one today to pick up the phone and go, hey, do you know what? I'm, I'm sorry. Maybe, right, maybe today you are in crippling debt and it seems like in this story that there are mountains and that you are surrounded. Maybe get moving today is for you to call somebody and say, do you know what, I need help. To call Christians Against Poverty, to call the bank, to get moving and take action. Maybe get moving today is for you to say, do you know what, 
Let's call that marriage counsellor. Let's book some marriage counselling. Let's work on a marriage. We need, we need help. Whatever it is for you today, let me encourage you to get moving. Or maybe today the get moving is that you need to get back into right relationship with God. Maybe to get moving today, you need to come to God and you need to say sorry for all the things that you've done wrong. Maybe you need to come back and you need to say to God again or maybe the first time, God, I need you. I want you to come into my life. Well, the great news for you today is that you have never been too far away from God. God loves you so passionately. The Bible tells us that nothing can separate us from his love. So today, get moving. Put your trust in God. He loves you. He is for you. And I want to pray for you this morning. I want to pray that whatever situation you find yourself in today, that you will, have, you will put your faith in the right thing that you will have confidence in a big God who is able to do more than you can ask or imagine. I want to pray that you all have the faith today to get moving. So church, I'm just going to pray wherever you are, um, you know, in your front rooms, wherever you live, why don't you just, you know, close your eyes, do whatever you need to do. And we're just going to speak to God together today. Yeah, God, I just thank you so much that you are, will never let us down. I thank you that your word promises that you will never leave us, that you will never forsake us. You, you think of us as your masterpieces, that you said that we are your sons and daughters and that you have created us to do good works. And first of all, I want to pray for anybody out there who has found themselves in what they feel is an impossible situation. I want to pray today that you will speak to them about their individual situations. I want to pray that, that you will, they will just know your love today and they will have confidence in how big you are, that they will have the confidence to get moving, to step forward and do all that it is that you have called them to do. And God, I also want to pray for people who are watching this, who, who have walked away from you, who maybe haven't been to church in a while, who, who maybe knew you once but have drifted away or people who have never chosen to put their trust in you and I want to just pray for those people right now if you are one of those people why don't you pray with me we're just going to pray a simple prayer which just says sorry for the things that we've done wrong and ask Jesus to come into our lives so yeah heavenly father we just thank you so much that you loved us and and we're sorry for the things that we have done wrong. We're sorry for the times that we have let you down, that we have let ourselves down, that we have done things that, that weren't pleasing to you. Thank you that you sent your son. Thank you that you sent Jesus to die for us on the cross so that we can be forgiven. Thank you that he rose again, showing that, that you have power even after death. And we want to ask you this morning to come into our lives. We want to say again today that we have put our trust in you, that we believe you, that we love you. Just want to pray that you will come into our lives again. Just want to pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. It has been a privilege to talk with you this morning, to share with you this morning. I really hope that God has just spoken to you powerfully this morning. Just know again that God is for you, that he loves you and that you can have complete confidence in him. The faith to fight, what an incredible message that was from Heather. You know, if you responded to the prayer that Heather prayed, then we want to get in touch with you. We want you to get in touch with us. You know that there are so many different ways. You can either email us, dartford at the netchurch.co.uk, sittingbourne at the netchurch.co.uk. You can message us via our Facebook pages or via our Instagram pages. We want you to, we want to hear from you that if you prayed that prayer, you know that God, it wasn't an accident that you've flicked us on this morning, that God has a plan for your life. God loves you passionately. So get in touch with us. We want to hear from you. This Tuesday night, we have got our powerful time of prayer at 7.45 on our Net Church Dartford Facebook page. So make sure you tune in for that. If you've got prayer requests, again, use the same ways to get in touch with us. But we are going to, we're going to put our faith in action this week and we are going to petition heaven and we're going to believe that God is going to respond to our faith this week as we lift prayers to him. But church, we love you. Have a great Sunday. Have a great week. Stay connected and be blessed.